to finally get to play the finale Also, like, this is kind of new, but I decided to try to stop using the facial filter uh, for a variety of reasons, but yeah, so just using actual face. Oh, hello to Pow or this new island. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Alright, so we're picking up right in the excitement of chapter 10. As I recall, Lucette was kidnapped and then rescued, um, and, uh, I was com- I remember commenting on how I liked how, at first, uh, Chevalier had to drag Lucette because she was really troubled by leaving everyone behind just to escape by herself, um, but now, um, Myth has, uh, gone ahead and, who was revealed to be a witch, has gone ahead and is like ma making the soldiers like he's mind controlled them and he's making them fight each other just for funsies and it is really <laughs> hello john do, 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 or johnny one take do, do, do. Uh, and also a little higher um yeah so Things were exciting when last we left our heroes. Chapter 10. Not like mother. Oh right, and that reminds me, Myth is also specifically trying to revive Lucette's mother somehow or another through the Tenebrarum crystal. Um, so yeah, so right now they Lucette was escaping with Chevalier, and but Chevalier is like totally frozen by the soldiers just fighting each other in the rampant cruelty of that act, I think. So, Lucette. Chevalier, don't listen to him. Mithros. Ah, oh, just look at all of these men you cannot save. All of these men dying before your eyes. Chevalier. I... Lucette. Chevalier, we have to get away from here. Mithros. How many people have you really saved? In the grand scheme of things, you have no talent. That is why you sought help from a witch. Mithros' voice is oddly calm, and I can feel some sort of presence in the air that is different from normal. A knight plunges a sword through another's gut, causing him to lose his sword. The sword skitters across the, the floor, gleaming underneath the moonlight. I look desperately at Chevalier and realize that the magic is already working its way into him. He does not see anyone except for Mithros, who is still smiling at him from behind all of the knights. I glance at the sword, remembering what Chevalier taught me. Lucette, thinking to herself, Mithros is unguarded right now, but I have better judgment than that. And I told Chevalier that I was going to steer clear of the burden of taking someone's life. I have a promise to keep. I gaze up at Chevalier and realize that this was how he looked every time he regained a memory. Like he was stuck in his own mind. Lucette thinking to herself. There's only one thing I can think of to get him out of this trance. <laughs> yes! I clench my hand into a fist. Yes! Only one thing she can think of. I'm guessing that that thing is that she is going to about to punch him in the face. And I punch Chevalier in the face. Yup. Chevalier. Uh, ow! Gods, my face! 
Mithros, shocked. Impossible! Chevalier's eyes clear, and when he looks at me, I can tell he is distraught, but his eyes are seeing the present. Lucette. Sorry, I thought I lost you. Chevalier. I suppose I needed that, didn't I? Chevalier smiles sheepishly. It is fleeting and gone by the time we both turn to Mithros again. <laughs> I mean, this new island, I think punch him was a little safer than stab him. Punching him is more, might leave him with a bruise. At absolute worst, you're gonna like... I mean, there's no way she punched him hard enough to break a bone or anything, so he's just gonna end up with like a nasty bruise. Stabbing might be a little harder to fix <laughs> in the short term. Chevalier looks straight past the still fighting knights. If this bothers Chevalier, which it must, he hides it beneath a neutral expression. Mithras. How did you break my spell? You cannot even use any magic. Chevalier. She didn't break it with magic. She broke it with the power of love. I stare at him skeptically. We both know that is not true, and I know Chevalier well enough to know that he does not mean that. But Mithros looks furious. Mithros. Love. Ha! As if some fairy tale love could save you from this predicament. Princess, you're a witch. We feed off negativity, off of chaos and loathing. Love serves us no power. Chevalier. Life is about balance. Lucette taught me that. And although I might not be able to uphold a balance of negatives and positive my positives myself, I'm at least going to try. Good for him. You could try to do the same. Maybe look beyond your depressing life and start reaching for something that gives you happiness. Something that won't plummet you back into the same darkness. Mithras snaps his fingers and all the night the nights all freeze. They turn to us, swords raised. Mithras. I do not need to be lectured by some lovesick fool. Hello, Nesan. Thank you for lurking. Mithras. By all means, cling to your love. I will show you how fragile it is. Witches do not need love. Bold words for someone who was obviously in love with Lucette's mother. Mithros holds out his hands and the knights begin their steady, deadly march towards us. Chevalier takes my hand and pulls me back, but I see my opening in the narrative. Mithros enjoys inflicting pain with his words. Lucette, thinking to herself, and I can do the same. Out loud. If you do not need love, if you do not need affection, then why are you doing all of this for mother? Mithros. I am not. Lucette. You are doing it to be recognized. Why? Mithros. Every student wants to impress their teacher. His words are calm, but there is a desperation in them. Lucette thinking to herself, Mother was Mithros's teacher? I had thought he was just reviving her as another witch, but... Mm, yeah, don't worry about it. Lucette. The uh, flashback. Lucette. Do you know Mithros? Waltz. It was a long time ago. We both shared the same teacher. Oh, man. Right? I star me. Myth is definitely in love with Hildir. I am a... I'm hard-pressed to see it any other way. Also, like, dang. Waltz. I mean, this wasn't too hard to guess, but, like, that means Waltz was taught by Hildir as well. Lucette. Teacher? Wait. Waltz, are you a... Waltz. A witch, yeah. Lucette, thinking to herself. Waltz was mother's student? No, I cannot think about that right now. But I can use this to my advantage. I stormy. Yeah. Like, if he sits there and he's talking about how beautiful she is, then that's really hard to avoid. Both, uh, that being a true fact and, uh, hard to note. Hard not to notice. Lucette. I do not remember mother's students in the least, but one of them turned out all right turned out right. The other did not, 
and I can see the bitterness in you. It is the same bitterness I held, only yours goes deeper. Mithros, you will not sway me with your foolish words. Oh, this new island, right? More fodder for the theory that Walt's organized all those birthday things for Lucette. Then again, they were all signed M, so there is the small chance that Mithros used to not be a total dick and, like, really cared about Lucette. Possible. Mithros, you will not sway me with your foolish words. The knights began to rush us. Their run is more of a pathetic shuffle given the harmed state that they are in, but this does not slow them down. Oh, right, this new island. You're right, you're right. W is M. She could have... Yeah, yeah. Chevalier. We're going to run. Lucette. But... Chevalier. Trust me, princess. I will protect you no matter what happens. He grabs my hand and we wait. I can see Chevalier's eyes darting around as he searches for an opening. I can feel the pulse of his quickened heartbeat through his hand, and I know he is panicking. Well, that was a different color magic circle. I feel like that wasn't... Myth Myth's color is green and Dolores' color is red, so who is gold? Suddenly, there is a massive luminescent gold wall in front of us. The knights stumble right into it, their swords hitting the bright barrier. Ah, gold is parfait. Well, I, I do appreciate seeing Parfait take, like, real and immediate helpful action of something she's historically been bad at. But, you know, maybe she's trying to make up for past mistakes. Parfait, are you two okay? Parfait rushes to stand in front of us. Mithros' expression is a cold, angry glare. He measures the situation with critical eyes, and then he turns away and begins to dart down the hall. Parfait, ugh. Parfait collapses to one knee, arms still outstretched to maintain the barrier. Delora appears. She is flustered and bleeding on one arm, but she still stands straight. Delora holds up her hand and summons fire. Oh, uh, advertisement. Sorry. This New Island. I will give it a minute then to, uh, we'll have, uh, some reflection. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't see that you were on ad, but let's see. So Parfait made the gold barrier, then collapsed. Uh, Dolora shows up and casts fire. And I think that's probably all you missed. So. All right, Dolora holds up her hand and summons fire. Dolora, put down the shield, Parfait. I have this. Parfait releases the shield, and the magic projectiles shoot out at the knights. The two edge the knights back through the hallway, but I can see Parfait growing weaker and weaker by the moment. Parfait takes a deep, shuddering breath as she tries to stand. When she falls yet again, Chevalier takes a step forward and looks at her urgently. Chevalier. Lady Parfait! Parfait. I'm fine. Don't fuss. Her breathing is labored, but she still manages a smile. Parfait. I fought in the Great War. This is nothing. She looks at me and Chevalier. You two need to leave. Chevalier. But you're... Parfait. Fine. I just need to gather my energy. And she has Dolora there to look after her, to be fair, so... A spell from Dolora sends the knights sprawling to the ground after she creates a heavy downpour of rain that quickly turns to ice. Dolora. You two keep going. The entrance is clear. I notice the witches that had been standing behind Mithros approach us now. Dolora stands at the ready. I can tell that she is hiding a great amount of stress behind her smirk. Parfait slowly gets to her feet. Parfait. We fight together, Dolora. Dolora. There's no one I'd rather have fighting by my side, Faye. I ship them a lot! Chevalier. Come on, princess, while we still have an opening. We head around the side. 
Parfait erects a shield to protect us from any magic that comes our way, and Dolores summons a whirlwind as a distraction. Lucette. Ow! My foot is grazed by fire magic, causing me to stumble, but I force myself into a limping sprint regardless. Lucette, thinking to herself. This is nothing. At the entrance, I pause in the middle of the room. The main entrance hall is eerily silent. And then I see Mithros edging his way into the king's throne room. He is holding tight to Emily. He notices me watching and smiles. Then he disappears into the throne room. Lucette, we have to follow him. Chevalier, princess. Lucette, he has Emily. Chevalier's posture and expression are indecisive, but mine are not. Lucette, thinking to herself. I know Mithros is baiting me, but I cannot leave her alone. My gaze moves around the hallway as I search for other knights. The, the place is empty, but it is not long before we hear footsteps. I tense at the sound, and Chevalier holds tight to my hand. Then suddenly, as the finger, figure draws nearer, I recognize him, even if he seems a completely different, older person. Oh wow! Waltz seems to have uh, broken his curse. Oh my. Waltz. I finally found you! Chevalier. Waltz? Lucette. You... you broke your curse. But how? Chevalier stares at him in awe. Chevalier. I now dub you Waltz the Big! Waltz. There was never a Waltz the Small. Waltz shakes his head. And I broke my curse unexpectedly. I actually found the item I needed while I was searching around. But I can explain more later. For now, we have to go after Mithros. Do you know where he is? I wonder if the box that Lucette just kind of left lying around with the key right next to it was actually helpful to, to Waltz instead of being horribly dangerous. That'd be nice. Oh man, I'm having trouble adjusting to his face though. Like. I mean, I, like, sure, he got bigger and older, but I don't know, it's, it's just hard to readjust to his face, having changed that much all at once. Lucette, he is in the throne room. But yeah, now that Waltz is fully restored and should theoretically have all of his magic, I feel a lot better about Lucette walking into this throne room, because, like... With Waltz, they have much more firepower. <laughs> Mithros stands in the middle of the empty throne room, holding Emmeline to him. He has his hands around her neck. Mithros. No sudden moves, you three, or this girl dies. And I do know how much death bothers you. With a start, I realize he is talking to Waltz. All three of us are frozen. Waltz. Myth. Mithros. Traitor. Waltz. Why can't you see that Hildir wasn't trying to teach us? She was trying to corrupt us. Mithras. Silence, traitor. You betrayed her. During the war, you betrayed our own teacher. Lucette, thinking to herself. Betrayed? Waltz. Hildir was corrupted. She cannot be saved. Mithras. How dare you use her name? Mithros's fingers tighten on Emmeline's throat. I can see, see tears running down her face. Her sobbing is quiet, but it still reaches my ears in the silent room. Mithros. Varg! Varg appears from the darkness, as he did before. He smiles at all of us from behind Mithros, eyes glinting mischievously. Mithros. You didn't finish the job. Varg. You were awfully vague when you told me to take care of them. You know, most people would assume that meant entertaining them and offering them refreshments. Mithros. Obey me! Varg. Silence. Varg turns to us. He draws the sword he used earlier, his smile fading. I think I see something like pain in his eyes, but then I think it might be my imagination. He looks stoic as he moves towards us. When Waltz moves Mithros... Uh, when Waltz moves, Mithros's hands tighten over Emmeline's neck and she cries out. Chevalier is watching everything quietly. The concern in his eyes is muted by the urgency. 
I follow his gaze around the room, wondering what he is searching for. Chevalier. Myth, was it? You were injured during the Great War. I tended to you once. Stabbed in the stomach. You needed stitches for it. I feel Mithros's confusion before I see it. For just a few moments, though, his gaze is centered on Chevalier, his eyes probing him for information. Chevalier. No one came for you. Your teacher must have thought you were too weak, that you would die. Mithros, shocked. Okay, fair enough. Ice Star Me. Uh, uh, okay, just catching up on Ice Star Me. Waltz is a very powerful witch, so it would be tough for Myth. Good, good news. And okay, I must admit that was funny how Bard was sassy here against Myth. I agree, but it's also like, I believe at this point it is known that I actually quite like Varg. I know he's occasionally a problem, but m mostly he is a, well, he's always a problem. But I feel like he's more often an interesting, chaotic problem than he is genuinely a bad problem, if that makes sense. He has helped Lucette as often as he has harmed harmed her. Also, yeah, this new island. I agree. Good play from Rumble. Mithros's hands fly away from Emmeline's neck as he lunges towards Chevalier with a snarl, his expression mad. The room breaks out into chaos, then. I feel the rise of magic beside me as Waltz readies a spell, the tension in Chevalier's body as he prepares to shield me, and lastly, I see Varg zip across the room. Everything goes white. And when I look up, I see Walt standing in front of me with a shield. Mithros's hand lies flat against the shield, and I can feel the heat of his magic. Varg lies on the ground beside his fallen sword, unconscious from the impact of magic. Even Chevalier is on his knees. I rush towards the sword at the same moment that Walt pushes Mithros back onto the ground. Then, sword in hand, I stand above Mithros and aim it at his neck. The blade touches his skin without sinking into it. Emmeline is hiding behind the throne, staring out at the scene with shock on her tear-stained face. Mithros. Will you kill me? Mithros's smile is a mere shadow of itself. Chevalier. A uh, flashback to Chevalier saying, You saw the soldiers in the clinic today. You saw how close some of them were to death. Did you see the hollow look in their eyes? I have seen that look many times. It is the look of a man who clings desperately to life. Every life is precious, and a life is still a life, whether it's vile or not. It is still a responsibility you have to bear. I know how valuable lives are because I have helped so many people. Lucette, thinking to herself, that desperation is in Mithros's eyes now, a man that clings to life. It would be so easy to slice his throat. Lucette thinking to herself, I have seen so much bloodshed shed on this night, and it was all caused by Mithros. If I kill him, I can stop all of it. But that would make me no better than mother. I drop the sword. Mithros actually stops to stare at me in shock. Lucette, I am not like mother. I will not kill you for revenge. No sooner have I said the words than that I feel a sudden heat at my chest. My hand instinctively reaches up to grab the necklace around my neck. Interesting. Her third and final good deed in this route is sparing Mithros? Wow. That's interesting. That's more of an act of mercy than it is a good deed, but I mean, it counts. I feel like it's more an act of goodness, like not not just like a good deed, but like an act of goodness. And under that, an act of mercy absolutely counts. And I can see that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty powerful, honestly. And then there is a bright light. When the light clears, a new source of light catches my eyes. I stop to stare down at my feet, which are in glass slippers that shine so brightly they sparkle even in the dim light. Lucet, shocked but I have no time to admire the shoes or the weight that has fallen off my shoulders. I barely recognize that the fairy tale curse has been broken. Emmeline rises from behind the throne and screams. L Emmeline, Lucette, watch out! Mithras has grabbed the sword with his hand, turned it around, and is aiming it at my chest. It hits a barrier. 
Her face stands beside me once more, her face devoid of any color. I did not see her rush in here. She takes a step forward, as if to shield me. Mithros, out of my way! Mithros draws the sword back and plunges it again at the shield. This time the blade is coated with darkness. It pierces the already flimsy shield, and the blade goes through Parfait's heart. Woof. Yeah, this new island, 100%, an act of mercy is a good deed. I mean, I think of it as, I guess I was thinking of good deeds as smaller than an act of mercy. Like, so I, like, but by recontextualizing good deed as, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm distracting myself with comments here for a reason, because wow. So last time we had Fritz die, and it looks like this time Parfait dies, is my guess. Oof. Lucette. Parfait! Parfait grabs the blade and narrows her eyes at Mithros. Parfait. I am sorry Hildir did not appreciate you. Something swells inside of me as I stare at Parfait. The sword is impaled in her, and I can see her eyes go glassy. Lucette. I... I cannot speak, cannot breathe. Waltz rushes forward with his magic and pins Mithras forcefully to the ground. He raises his hand, but it never comes down in time. A sword strikes past his soldier, shoulder, right at Mithras' neck. When I turn, it is Chevalier that is holding it. His body shakes as tears run down his cheeks. Mithras holds his neck as Chevalier holds up the blade and throws it behind him. Out of the corner of my eyes, I catch movement that can only be Varg, but I do not care. Chevalier. L Lady Parfait, do not move. We can take the sword out. We can... But I see a hopelessness in Chevalier's expression, and I know that whatever wound Parfait took was lethal. I can see it in his eyes. I can see it in Parfait's. Parfait. There is no need to fuss. When Parfait falls, Waltz grabs her and puts his hand to the hilt of the sword. Chevalier crumples beside her. He stares at the blood staining her dress with sorrow. I start to cry. Parfait. That's fair, that's fair. In Lusa, uh, Ice Starmie points out, in Rod's root, her third good deed was putting her life on the line for Rod, which is also a big thing. Yeah, I guess it just, I guess it was just sparing, sparing a life is a good deed, even if that life didn't really deserve to be spared. Perhaps especially if that life didn't deserve to be spared. And I think that's what I had to recontextualize. Anyway, back to the super sad dramatic scene. Parfait. Lucette, do not regret this. I am proud of you. The room is quiet, even with the newcomers that arrive. The knights and Karma watch the scene from the sidelines, all with grim looks on their faces. Last to arrive, who sits down beside Parfait, uh, uh, last to arrive is Delora, who sits down beside, Par beside Parfait with her lips pulled into an uptight frown. Her face is stern, but I can tell it is a mask. Delora, Parfait, Parfait, that look doesn't suit you, Delora. Delora. I told you to stay back! Parfait. Had I not been there in t here in time, the princess would have... Her words fall apart as she begins to cough. Delora leans over her and shakes her head. Delora. I'm sorry I didn't come sooner. Parfait. Everything is as it should be, Delora. Parfait cranes her neck to look up at me. Wipe away your tears, Lucette. What you did was a good deed. You spared a man's life. Lucette. But I... Delora. Life is not a fairy tale. Humans are good and bad. Parfait. No, it isn't. But the fear of death makes a life even more valuable. Delora. Silence. Parfait. Do not worry, princess. I chose this. Parfait smiles. It is a mystifying to see her smile when her body is slowly crumbling away and waltzes grass. 
Parfait's body is what gives out first. Her eyes go next. They remain focused on me, still smiling. Her body begins to glow as her body slowly fades away. Lucette. Parfait! Parfait! Delora turns away. Even if she is not shedding any tears, it is clear that she is heartbroken. She closes her eyes and releases a shaky sigh. Delora. Sweet dreams, my friend. I do not know how long we all stay in that room, mourning the loss of Parfait. Karma, Jurian, and Garland eventually spread out to search for any remaining danger. At some point, they return with the king and the rest of the family. My reunion with my family is half-hearted. I do not want, know what to say to the people that I hated only months ago. Despite the quiet, they all take me in with open arms. The king stays by my side long after the others have left. Karma and the knights return to the Marchand to, turn the, to tell the others the news. Waltz goes to search the palace for any remaining resistance. Only Delora, Chevalier, the king, and I remain. Chevalier cries. I have never seen him cry before, but his heartbreak is my own. What happened was a nightmare, but it eventually ended. Yeah, all right. Taking a short break here. This new island. Yeah, I do wonder who will inherit her crystal. Anyway, I'm, I'm very sorry. My water has run out, and I very much need water for this one. So I will be right back. And I'm going to remember to run a commercial while I'm back, right, while I'm on my BRB screen so nobody gets hit by it in the middle of the story. Or people are less likely to get hit by it in the middle of the story. So be right back. All right. I am returned freshly watered like a plant. Um, yes. Also, I'm glad to hear that there is a next Lucis bearer and that that is sorted so, I might, I'm not gonna totally promise this, but I may stream Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore after I finish Cinderella Phenomenon. Um, if I don't do that, I will be going into, um, because I also really want to stream Code Realize, which is another, um, like, really popular and like known to be good otome game so all right what happened was a nightmare but it eventually ended last night varg escaped the throne room no one saw where he disappeared to in all of the chaos i am beginning to believe that his faint was a trick since the night had left everyone so tired we were offered rooms in the palace i came to my room with chevalier where the two of us attempted to comfort each other with words Chevalier was especially shaken, being the one to kill Mithros. He was in tears for a long time. I'm pretty sure that I must have fallen asleep sometime when we were talking, but... I'm lying in my bed, underneath my covers, and though I think for a few moments that it must be a figment of my imagination, it is not. Ah. Okay, that's actually really kind of cute that they just stayed up talking and comforting each other. Uh, and, and like just I don't know I just find it really sweet that they just kind of fell asleep while like talking and comforting each other and, and I don't know I just that's cute to me um, oh also this new island which one do you mean do you mean uh, Code Realize or Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore Oh yeah, Ice Starmie, I am so sure. Like, I, I agree wholeheartedly, like, that that faint was Varg, a trick of Varg's, because he clearly, I mean, we don't know much about him yet, though I will find out next route, I imagine. Um, like, we being those of us who have not played the game. Um, but, like, brrr. Oh, fair enough, this is uh, yeah. So yes, Varg. He clearly did not actually want to be doing what Mithros said. So, like, a fake out, like, what? Yeah, I totally fainted. Can't ask me to be involved in this fight anymore. Sorry. I mean, to be fair, um, Tapau, if you stream uh, Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore, I don't know if the roots go in the same order as this. But if they do, then you could get started, and then by the time, and like you wouldn't necessarily, 
I'm not sure if it would be spoilery, though. Hey, Ice Starmie, is, um, is there a root order, like, does Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore work the same way as this, and is there a root order, and does it take place after the events of this game? And also, would it spoil the final route? These are all questions I have, if you are up for answering them. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to the cute romance scene. Chevalier is definitely lying right next to me, sleeping beneath those same covers. Lucette, thinking to herself. How did this happen? I put off the recollection of the previous day to stare at Chevalier's face. His glasses are off, and without them, his face seems strangely empty. He looks vulnerable, almost like a child. Except his features are too handsome for that. Lucette, shocked, thinking to herself, what am I thinking? I slowly put my hand to his cheek and flinch when his eyebrows crease. Moments later, his eyes open. They are foggy this early in the morning. Chevalier, what is this? Have I been woken by my princess? Usually it is the princes that wake their princesses. Lucette, thinking to herself, I will always wonder how he manages to keep smiling like this. Even when he is in pain, he forces a smile. Out loud. But you are no prince, and I am not some damsel princess. Chevalier closes his eyes again and sighs. Chevalier. There is only one way to break the spell of sleep. Lucette, shocked. I flush as his lips curl into a mischievous smile. Still, his eyes do not open. I think about what happened last night. Parfait and Mithros' death. Varg's escape. Everyone else's heartbreak. Lucette thinking to herself. Before I have to relie relieve the burden, I can afford to lose myself in some happiness. I agree! She can take a minute to just be like, have cute, happy moment with her boyfriend. Okay, thank you, Ice Starmie. So the root order is less important because the plots of the root are less similar. Okay, that, that makes sense. Thank you for the heads up. All right. I lean forward to kiss his smile. I break away, uh, and then there's a knock on the door. I break away from Chevalier, startled. Waltz, princess? Chevalier, how distressing. Waltz, the big ruins everything. I quickly slip out of bed, and Chevalier sits up and puts on his glasses with a yawn. Waltz. Good morning, princess. And his eyes widen when he sees Chevalier. Chevalier. Are you so tired that words have abandoned you, Waltz? Waltz. Shocked. No, I just... I wanted to see if the princess was doing okay. If you were both alright, actually. He pauses to look at us, his eyebrows furrowed in thought. Chevalier. Though I can imagine just how tongue-tied you must be, you should speak if you have something to say. Waltz sighs. Waltz. I didn't want to bring this up so soon, but it's been on my mind the whole night. It's just... You didn't have to kill Myth. That was my job. Chevalier. Your job? I doubt that. Besides, I didn't want to kill him. It was a reaction. Oh, hello, six card. Aw, thank you for the hype. Um, not sure if anyone in mod mode is available, so I will go do a little shout out. All right. The room goes silent for a few moments as Chevalier stares down at the floor. He told me before that lives were valuable. Lucette thinking to herself, That is why I tried to save Mithros. But in the end, my sparing his life forced Chevalier to carry the burden of his death. He has already told me that it is not my fault. Parfait said that what I did was a good deed. But still, killing Mithros saved us more casualties. I hope I can convince Chevalier of that. Most likely, he will wrestle with that guilt for a long time. I turn my, question, my attention back to Waltz and will the questions to the back of my mind for the time being. Lucette. Waltz, there are questions I need to ask you. 
thinking to herself, about how he broke his curse, about Mother being his teacher, about Mithros. There is so much to ask him, I do not even know where to start. Waltz. We have plenty of time for explanations now, Princess. After your birthday, Delora and I will pick up your magic education. But for now, you should rest. I'll give you the full story of my apprenticeship and curse another day. <laughs> because we're not going to get it until another route, I assume. Oh, I'm doing pretty good, six card. Lucette. Lucette is a great... I, I don't know, I like Lucette a lot. She's, she's a great character. Uh, Waltz. But, Princess, Chevalier, I just thought I'd let you know that when Parfait came into this battle, she expected to die. It was very sad Parfait died. She told uh, all of us that while we were sitting around trying to plot a rescue plan. I glance at Chevalier, who nods quietly. Lucette, thinking to herself, was it because of her frailty after the Great War? Or did Parfait somehow have a feeling? Waltz. Oh, also. Congratulations on breaking your curse, princess. Chevalier. Shocked. Chevalier sits up straight, his eyes narrowed behind his glasses. Chevalier. Waltz, I was supposed to congratulate her first. I mean, dude, you had all night to notice. Chevalier stands and kisses me promptly on the cheek. My cheeks flush, and even Waltz looks embarrassed. Chevalier. Congratulations, my sweet. It was all very dramatic when your curse broke. There was this bright light and... Wait. Why was there no bright light when I broke my curse? Both Waltz and I burst into laughter. Chevalier just sighs dramatically. He leans against my shoulder and I do not protest. Lucette. I have a feeling that getting through the memory of last night might be easier with him here. If anyone can put a smile on my face, it is Chevalier. Aw, precious. Oh, yep, I star me. <laughs> Six card, good old waltz dancing around the issue. <laughs> I'm sorry that I, I am a sucker for silly bad puns, so I love it. All right, uh, and then I star me says uh, exactly the whole story of waltz's root is for, waltz's curse is for his root only. That's fair. Just like with all the guys, we need their roots to get the full story of their curses. Yeah, like, I was like, there was a point here where I'm like, it feels like this would be a totally reasonable point to reveal that Varg is Fritz, except that there's no way that, I was like, there's no way that'll happen before his root. Anyway, Waltz. We hope to see you at the Marchen again soon, princess. Lucette. I will be back. After all, I have friends there. Good for her, and I love her cute smile. She's just a lot better off in life, and it's just, aw. Waltz, shocked. Lucette, did I speak falsely? Waltz, no, of course not. It's the truth. Anyway, I need to get going. I've explained what happened to your father, but you should talk with him privately soon. Lucette, thinking to herself, after everything that happened last night, speaking to the king is the last thing on my mind. But I suppose it must be done. Chevalier. Thank you, Waltz. Waltz. And you, Chevalier, you might want to ask for a guest room. Chevalier. But no bed is as comfy as the princess's. I mean, of fucking course, he's not like, he's literally probably not wrong. Like, the princesses are probably gonna have, like, her and Emmeline are probably gonna have among the most comfortable beds in the palace. I nudge him without realizing it, but Chevalier just laughs. We promise Waltz that we will see him and everyone else in the bar tent soon. Afterwards, Waltz hurries out and shuts the door. My eyes go to the edge of my bed, where something shiny catches my eyes. The shoes! Lucette, thinking to herself. The glass slippers are a reminder of everything that happened yesterday. Of the fact that life goes beyond just black and white. Good and evil are subjective, Lucette thinking to herself. In the end, life is gray, mother. Both good and bad. But even so, even though fairy tale endings cannot exist, I still want to live my life with everyone else. Aww, 
there's her cute smile again. Also, six card, I am flattered that you would watch me play the crap out of anything. Or, like, I, I've actually missed which thing we were talking about, but, like, I, I appreciate the sentiment nonetheless. Lucette thinking to herself. Mithros centered his life around a single person. He was selfish. I will become someone better than him. Thinking about Mithros makes me remember something. Lucette, out loud. Chevalier, yesterday you said you took care of Mithros during the Great War. That no one came for him. Was that true? Chevalier, I don't know, Lucette. He acted like it was, though, wasn't it? Lucette, so you never knew Mithros? Chevalier, no, I didn't know him at all. I don't know if I would have been able to strike him down if I did. I don't know what burden he carried, but it seemed heavy. I only guessed at what I could say to distract him. I'd heard rumors of a strong witch that went abandoned for many years. That may have been him. It might not have been. Lucette, silence, thinking to herself. So deception exists in everyone, but it is not entirely what Mother said it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the story so we can learn the respective person. Yes, yes, I am planning to play, like, so, like, this is Rumpel's route. I've already played through Rod's route and Karma's route, and then there's two more of the guys' routes to play through, and it is Fritz and Waltz, so we'll get to find, and Waltz is, like, the true route, so you get not only his whole story, but, like, all the extra backstory of, of the, the plot of the game, so it's pretty cool. Anyway. My birthday is tomorrow. I sit in the throne room, speaking to my father, who has listened to my tale with patience. When it is over, he looks at me sadly. King Gennaro. I owe you an apology, Lucette. This whole time you have been on your own, and I could not do a thing for you. Lucette. You can now. Starting first by explaining what happened between you and mother. You knew she was a witch. King Gennaro. Silence. I did. You did, too, before she forcefully erased your memories. I tried reaching out to you many times when you were a child, but my efforts were met with resistance. Still, I cannot e excuse myself for what I have done. I truly abandon you, and I am sorry for that, Lucette. I will explain the story to you if you give me time. For now, I would very much like to mend my bond with you. Lucette, thinking to herself. Oh... See you later, Tapau. Lucette thinking to herself. To be honest, the king still angers me. He only apologizes now, after all of this has come to light. Whether or not I was difficult to speak to, he still had an obligation to seek me out. And I agree wholeheartedly. Like, even if he, like, I can understand, like, maybe, like, he was getting resistance not just from her, but from Hildir, and that making it really hard to reach out to her when she was a kid, but, like... After Hildir died, there was, like, a good, what was it, four years? Like, ugh. That he should have been, like, being there at, for her and trying to be a father, even if she didn't... Even if she was pushing him away, he should have tried. Yeah, I star me. Gennaro is just so lukewarm in Rob's route. He was, like, really cool in Karma's route. Here he's just, like, giving a proper apology, which I'll accept. Lucette thinking to herself, he is still late to care, but he is still my father, and I can forgive him. I can learn to trust him again. Out loud, it will take time, but I would like to mend our bond. I would also like to try speaking with Emmeline, Rod, and Ophelia, but that will take time. The king smiles at me. It is one of the first honest smiles I have seen from him in years. King Gennaro. We have time, all of the time in the world, and we will mend our family bond, I promise. As I turn to leave the room, the king calls out to me. I also appreciate that it's like, I can't, like, that sh that, that there's no expectation, that, that the game, like, the writers don't, don't write it like they're gonna instantly be okay. Because, like, when you have shattered trust between, like, any, in any relationship, but, like, you know, including, like, parent-child. Like, if you have shattered trust with your child, 
Like, you can't expect them to just forgive you like it's nothing. It's a big deal. Like, you gotta, you gotta work to get that back. I started, I actually wonder if maybe it's because they were spending so much time on her bonding with the rest of the family that they were like, well, we can save Gennaro for other roots. Um, so, so like, like, literally, I wonder if it's just because the focus was so much on her step family, they specifically avoided having the, the scene with Gennaro. Maybe. King Gennaro. Lucette, I am proud of you. More proud than any other father in the realm could ever be of his child. Lucette. Little smiley silence. After what happened, we searched for Fritz, but he has vanished. Mithros and Varg had said that they had replaced him, but they never said anything about what had happened to him. We searched endlessly, but to no avail. All I can hope is that he is safe, and that I will reunite with him again in the future. Enlane. Oh, Waltz's performance today was amazing. Don't you agree, Mr. Chevalier? Chevalier. I agree. You ladies looked especially charming with so many lilies floating around you. Emmeline. Oh my. Lucette. He always speaks like that. Do not mind him. It has been a whole month since the events at the palace. My birthday has come and gone. Now, my life begins. I have been practicing magic with Waltz and Delora, attempting to bond with my family, and visiting the Marchan when time allows me to. Annis was overjoyed to see me visiting often. Since Chevalier operates from there as a doctor, I visit often. Mostly, though, he clings to me like a leech. Oftentimes I find him in my bed when I could have sworn he was sleeping in another room for the night. Sometimes, at night, he has nightmares. Of blood on his hands, and of Mithras's death. And at those times, I am glad to be sitting right beside him, so I can promise him that things are all right. Yeah, I can forgive that. Like, you know, especially since it's like clearly like cute and innocent sleeping, like sleeping beside each other, kind of sleeping together. Like, I I can understand why he would like creep into her bed a lot just to like just to like sleep together for comfort, like because he's he's going through some shit. Yeah, I start me exactly. That was my thought. Like that they felt that since they wanted to leave that for other groups. That's the best guess I've got. It does seem a little weird. As for the fairy tale curse, Rod. I have no idea how Lucette puts up with you. Rod's voice comes out from between his lips. Now he can actually speak. Ah, oh, but he hasn't abandoned Seffi. I like that. Since the fairy tale curse was tied to Mother's still living soul in the crystal. Her disappearance, and my taking her place immediately, and my taking her place immediately caused the root to vanish. Oh, huh. So it just, she didn't have to go break people's, I had always assumed she was going to have to learn how to break curses, but it just snaps into place the second she takes over. Wow, so like her mother's soul really was just chilling in the crystal. Wow, okay. Oh, Ice Starmie, that's also a really good point. They might have needed to justify why the king never noticed. Yeah. I have been working for days to break everyone's fairy tale curse. Nope, okay, never mind. So it's the root of the curse vanished, and now and now she is mad. She I, okay, I was right the first time. She is magically undoing everybody's curses. Um I have been working for days to break everyone's fairy tale curses with magic. And when I am done, no one in this kingdom will have to suffer from it ever again. And now, the Marchan is not just a place reserved for the cursed. Now it is open to the public. Oh no, I just had the thought of, oh, that should really help with Parfait's financial wo- oh. Well, okay, it will still help with the Marchan's financial woes, which is probably- If I had to guess, I'd- I'm- Maybe it'll actually clarify, but I'd bet that the Marchan is being run by Del Delora now. Chevalier. Lucette enjoys it, though. She finds my poetic weavings to be the best in the kingdom. Lucette. What he means to say is that I can only put up with them because of our relationship. Emmeline. Loving someone so much that you can put up with their nonsensical poetry. Chevalier. 
I thought you were the nice one, Princess Emmeline. Lucette. No, she has a point. <laughs> Yay, that was cute. Emmeline focuses her attention on a musician standing off in the distance. She points excitedly, then rushes after them, pulling her brother with her. Her guards follow. Ever since the incident at the palace, we have had more security. I do not blame the king, though it can be tiring at times. Luckily, he is more lax with me. When I told him Chevalier was going to be with me, he settled with having Emmeline and I share guards. And so I get to be alone with Chevalier often. Father was wary of him at first, until he found out that he was a renowned doctor. Now he and Chevalier get on well enough. Chevalier takes a step closer to me, and I place my hands around his arm. Oh my gosh, that's so cute! Chevalier. I am no prince, nor am I a knight in shining armor. I am just a doctor. A doctor who has been blessed with the most beautiful woman in, the, in this world. Chevalier begins to lead me through town again. He is one of the only constants in my ever-changing life. He is the one that will always make me smile. And we share a burden, the burden of a friend's death. He is more burdened with nightmares than I am, and while I wish I could do more to help, I can at least listen to him, just like he listens to me. Lucette thinking to herself, no matter the burden, it can be overcome. Chevalier. Lucette? Lucette. Yes? Chevalier. I love you more than anything in this world. Lucette, I love you too. We share one kiss, ignoring the spectators in town with a shared smile. Then we follow after Emily. That was cute. Like, I, I the, the romance eventually won me over. And I actually like that it was resolved to so the last two chapters. It was just an established fact. Because I actually, I, I really enjoy, like, I love the dating sims and the otome games like this and like you know developing the relationship over time but i also love getting to see and now we're in the relationship and so them having like started a relationship in chapter eight meant that we got like two full chapters of them like being like cute and in love in every scene that it came up and that just i don't know it just makes me happy so yeah so that was Rumpel's Root in Cinderella Phenomenon. And that means that next week I'm going to be starting with Fritz's. I mean, okay, I'll be starting back over with the prologue and then chapter one, and then it'll be Fritz's Root. Oh man, this is, this is just, this is a cute game. Like, there were a lot of elements in Rumpel's Root that were like, you know, hit or miss for me, but like, in the end, I, it, 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 it didn't win me over as much as Karma's did, and I would say it's probably my least favorite of the roots in the game so far, but that is a high bar. So, like, because all of the I like, I loved Rod's root, I loved Karma's root, I'm really looking forward to Fritz's root, and I have no reason to doubt that Waltz's root will also be excellent since it's the true root. And it's gonna have massive plot, plot dumps, so, like... So, like, it's more like, they are all good. If I had to put a ranking, this one would end up being the lowest. But I still enjoyed it. And just, like, a lot of the shit that he was doing that was problematic, he, he did just stop. And I appreciate that. Like, he's a little bit, like, oh, beautiful ladies. But, like, he wasn't... Like, it didn't feel like he was actively being flirty the way he was before like it felt like he was respecting Lucette's wishes like and I just really appreciated that when she was like look I don't like it he was like yeah all right I'll stop and it just that really helped for me with his his uh, liking him plus I, I I liked once we found out that he was like a doctor and had all this like extra depth to him that helped a lot too so yeah that was a lot of fun Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate you all very, very much. Everyone who's been watching, Ice Starmy and Pow and Johnny One Take and my sister was lurking and Six Card. Thank you all for very much for, for hanging out and chatting. And anyone who might be lurking and anyone who might be watching this later, I appreciate you all very, very much. So I will be back with Cinderella Phenomenon uh, back at the prologue. So great point to jump in if you wanna get caught up on the story uh, next Monday. And uh, my next stream is going to be this Friday, and I have not decided what I will be doing. I'll do my nor I'm planning to do my normal afternoon stream, but I did just finish Kirby, so I'm not totally sure what I'm going to play. Um, but I will figure it out. 
Uh, not promising, but I am considering looking into the Crystalis Rando thing. It's definitely been on my list to do eventually, so... Um, do, do, do. So yeah, so that was Rumpel's Root of Cinderella Phenomenon. And I will hopefully see folks at my next stream or next week or at some later point. Indeed, I star me until next time. Bye!